It's time for a video walk around of the John Deere 316 electric conversion that I just finished. This is the third tractor I've converted. The uh, first one was a Toro lawn tractor. And that tractor lasted exactly one day. The 13 horsepower high torque electric motor completely tore the rear end and the transmission apart on that little lawn tractor. It just couldn't handle the torque. Next step was to find a gear drive tractor and I found a John Deere 214 a gear driven tractor. And that worked out great. That was an awesome tractor and you can read all about it and see it in action with great videos on my website rvbprecision.com Roger Victor Bravo Precision.com It's pretty interesting to see how great that tractor worked. But I wanted a hydro tractor, a hydraulic drive tractor. I just wanted to play around with hydraulics. I had some ideas for front and rear hydraulics, so the search started for a 300 series tractor. I found this one year only 316K uh, motor didn't run, but supposedly it ran a couple months before I bought it, so I sold the motor. Recouped basically all the cost of the tractor. The 316K, which was only made one year, has dual spools and dual brakes like a 318 or a 317. The only thing it lacks is power steering. This was a challenge. Uh, putting this tractor together was a little more involved than the 214. Uh, I had some vibration problems with the drive shaft, which is a, uh, a rag joint drive shaft. And just a couple days ago, I replaced that drive shaft with a real universal joint drive shaft, and that solved just about all the vibration problems. So let's start with wheels and tires. These are 26 inch tires. I lifted the body one and a half inches, which I had to do because there's a battery under the seat. Anyways, we'll get into that in a minute. The front tires are 18 950s. I had to actually build a couple of spacers to get those tires. They're so fat and so wide, I had to use some spacers to get them away so they weren't rubbing on the steering mechanism. Now, those worked out pretty cool. I also have a set of what I will call summer tires, five rib uh, 18 inch tires, which go on with the wheels. Now in the front of this tractor, I built a trailer lift. Mostly what I use this tractor for is moving trailers around the property. So with this lift, I can just drive up to a trailer using the snow plow ports on the front, spools on the front, and I can just lift up the tongue of the trailer and move it around. It makes it real, real easy. As you can see, this tractor has the dual brakes, which that was a must have. As I'm towing these trailers, sometimes up hills and whatnot, I'm losing steering. The weight, on, if I'm towing them from the rear, the weight on the back is too heavy. And uh, dual brakes is awesome for steering. Now I had to build a new dashboard. The dashboard incorporates a um, battery monitor, which tells me how much voltage I have. I don't know if you can see this. Actually, it's a little dusty. I've actually been using the tractor. And that tells me how much voltage I have. Also has a horn. And over here we have two indicator lights. One is for the lights on the trailer. And the other one is for a fan, which I'll show you in a second. And then we have a simple ignition switch, I call it. But basically it just turns the contactor on. Very simple. These tractors are really quite simple to build. I mean, the mechanics of getting the motor in and hooking it up to the rear end is a little involved. But the electronics is easy. Batteries, a contactor, a switch to turn on the contactor. That's it. Tractors do not have a gas pedal. This motor can run on 48 volts or 36 volts. Currently, I have it on 36 volts. On 48 volts, this thing's a bear. It's nearly unmanageable. It has so much power. I've got uh, the front tires are weighted with uh, windshield washer fluid, plus I have 160 pounds of batteries in the front, plus the motor, which weighs about 25 pounds. And on 48 volts, this thing will pop wheelies. It'll lift that front end right up if you're not careful. So right now I've got it running on three batteries, 36 volts. So let's look at the batteries. These are 105 amp hour deep discharge lead acid batteries. 
There are two of them here under the hood. There's one under the seat. And then I have a fourth one over here in this box, which I'll show you in a second. Here's the fan that I suggested. Although, to, I've never had to use it. Um, the tractor just never gets hot. But if I had to, it would be there. The motor just doesn't get hot. And I've used this thing extensively, hauling wood out of the woods, uh, firewood and whatnot, hauling a trailer that weighs well over 1,500 pounds. Uh, with another thousand pounds in it. That's almost 2,500 pounds. That is a shunt. That is the device that reads all the amperage going into the battery and out of the battery. So to put amperage into the battery, these connectors right here are hooked up to these two front batteries. And then back here we have another connector where the gas fill used to be. Now it's electric fill. And that charges the battery that's under the seat. The fourth battery has its own connection on the side, and that's where I hook up a 6,500 pound winch. I also have a small gantry crane for lifting things on the side of my shop, and it's a 12 volt electric motor that I power off of that. I have a sleeve hitch. This tractor doesn't have a three point hitch. It has a sleeve hitch, which is hydraulically operated. These weights are lead bricks, solid lead. They each weigh about 35 pounds. And you can see I got quite a bit of weight here on the back. Weight is everything for a tractor. These tires filled with windshield washer fluid, I haven't weighed them. I'm guessing they weigh about 100 pounds. I mean, it's amazing how heavy they are. And plus, when you weigh the tires down with fluid, you're not putting any weight on the axles or on the suspension or the, or the uh, differential or any of the running gear of the tractor. I really like the idea of uh, weighing down the tires rather than putting the weight on the tractor itself. I needed a small toolbox. I built this thing. I taught myself how to scribe diamond plate aluminum and then bend it without a bending jig. Now I didn't want to make holes in the tractor, so this just simply has magnets on the bottom. They're very powerful magnets, bought them at Harbor Freight. It's never moved. This is the dead man switch. This switch right here shuts everything off turns everything on. So to start the tractor we simply turn on the dead man switch. We go over here make sure the brakes are engaged. I don't want it riding off into my little pond over there. And then we start it. Surprising how noisy these hydraulic pumps are when there's no gasoline engine when there's no gasoline engine making noise it's staggering to me how noisy they are uh, it really when you're on the way and you're moving it really quiets right down to like nothing but when it's idling like that and it's straining I guess or whatever you want to call it uh, yeah you will you you you'll have some noise on the front here I built this little rack thing and I can hook up a bumper hitch receiver right there if I don't want to use the hydraulic system and it just locks on just like the snowplow did very rugged I also have a, a small crane that mounts to this point here and I put that 6,500 pound winch on the end of it and I can lift up you know three four hundred pounds uh, with that crane on the front so anyways that's uh, that's my little electric tracker on the internet, somebody said it was shocking that we're making a point with exclamation point and quotations. I love that. So I had a sticker made and we named it shocking. The fourth battery, like I said, is an auxiliary battery or it can be tied into the main track to get 48 volts. Uh, it has a voltage gauge here, which tells me what the voltage is of this battery, because this battery, sometimes the tractor will be stationary for hours, and this battery is being used with a winch, hauling logs out of the woods and doing other things. So I want to keep track on this battery separate from the rest of the batteries. Um, I've got a 50 amp uh, resettable circuit breaker here, and like I said, these 50 amp Anderson connectors is where they, it charges, and where it also um, Discharges or hooks up uh, auxiliary devices. That just goes on there like that. 
So, the other thing that was interesting is I had the motor. The motor is mounted, you can't see it unfortunately, but the motor was mounted on a metal plate and that was fastened directly to the chassis of the tractor. And when I had the vibration problem of the drive shaft, the rag joint drive shaft, I thought maybe the motor was the problem, maybe it needed to be suspended. Hockey pucks, yep, hockey pucks. I used hockey pucks in between the metal of the motor and the metal of the chassis, and, you know. It wasn't that, it was the drive shaft. This drive shaft universal that I have in there right now, I still have a little bit of vibration. I paid $30 for this drive shaft off eBay. It's got a slight bend to it, and I didn't notice that it was bent until I had it all installed. Unfortunately, it's all installed. I'm going to mess around with lead weights on the drive shaft to see if I can balance out the slight bend it has. If not, I gotta take this whole tractor apart, take the drive shaft out, straighten it out. But that's for another day. It's really not that bad. It's fine. But I'd like it to be smoother. The 214 was amazingly smooth. Uh, it was a belt drive, obviously, and it had the variator, which was an amazing device. But I really like hydraulics. I like the ability to operate this tractor with not being on it when I'm hooking up a trailer or I'm pulling something out of the woods and I want to keep an eye on what's going on behind me. Uh, it's pretty cool. I actually thought about making the whole tractor remote control. I actually have a con radio control airplane controller and a bunch of servos. It really wouldn't be too hard to make this whole tractor remote control, so we'll have to see. One last thing, I think I skipped over it. Here's the auxiliary panel. And that works off of an inverter or converter that takes 36 or 48 volts and turns it into 12 volts. So I can run the lights, the horn, the fan, uh, anything else that's uh, 12 volts. So that's it. I hope you like a little shocking. I know I do. Don't forget, go to my uh, website rvbprecision.com or go to YouTube and just uh, search my name, a whole bunch of videos, and there'll be a lot of videos of this tractor. The videos that are up now are mostly the construction and the 214 and the little Toro tractor, but you get the idea. Thanks for watching.